discuss a case uh, which I posted uh, in the in the social media uh, of a four chamber view. I'll go step by step so that I make you understand how do we think in a in a hemodynamic way uh, to reach a particular diagnosis. So I think this approach would be very good. Anticipate what you are going to see uh, in the next move. And if you anticipate and think about it, that what you expect in the next one, you would not miss any abnormality. A uh, good idea to subscribe because uh, I'll keep on posting uh, newer and newer uh, uh, videos and uh, I think you'll be notified once uh, you subscribe to my channel. Now, uh, this is a patient which has a situs solitus and, uh, you know, on fourth chamber view, you can see cardiomegaly, the right ventricle is dilated and RA is dilated, fossa still bulges to the the left side and uh, that is a 2d of a, a four chamber view and you can notice this uh, large ra and large rv you can see the uh, hyper echoic uh, the anterior papillary muscle and the moderator band here and once you see on a color doppler you can notice that the lv inflow is good the RV inflow is reduced and there is a significant moderate to severe tricuspid regurgitation. So these are the findings. You have an RV dilated and which is hypokinetic and there is a moderate to severe tricuspid regurgitation and you can see the RV inflow markedly reduced as compared to the LV. You see the LV apex filling right up to the tip but the RV is not filling, it's just LV inflow of this nature. So what do you actually infer from this? You know, this can happen, let's say, there are three situations which can cause this. There are three things come into the mind. The very first thing comes into our mind because RV is hypocontractile. Is it RV dysfunction? You know, like uhul abnormality, like uh, cardiomyopathy, which rarely can involve the right ventricle only, now there are certain odds here the odd is that the inflows generally are not affected the inflow signals the inflow blood would remain almost the same and moreover in the fetus you generally do not get a single ventricle involvement the other ventricle also get in, involved because the heart is encased in a cage which is not aerated as the lungs they are solid lungs so there is a lot of interventricular interdependent so so if you have one ventricle dysfunction it generally tends to affect the other ventricle uh, in systole or in a diastole right so this doesn't look a very uh, good uh, way of uh, diagnosis then it could it be a primary tricuspid valve abnormality like uh, you have a tricuspid valve dysplasia it doesn't look like Epstein because there was no apical displacement of the, the septal leaflet of the tricuspid valve. So now in here you do get a severe tricuspid regurgitation but in a, a primarily a tricuspid valve abnormality what you would get would be that there will be increased RV inflow because there has been an uh, RV, uh, the LA the, because of the TR there's a there's a backflow and the entire blood would come back to the rv so rv inflow should be more than uh, usual so here the rv inflow signals are reduced so next most plausible explanation for this four chamber view is right ventricular outflow tract obstruction so where it could be it could be at the level of the pulmonary valve it could be a pulmonary atresia or it could be a ductal restriction. So these are three differential diagnoses you have. Let us dissect one by one. Now, pulmonary atresia is unlikely with intact ventricle septum because don't, you don't expect this size of the right ventricle because pulmonary atresia is there for quite some time and does not let the right ventricle glow. But pulmonary stenosis can be a possibility because once you have a pulmonary stenosis it tends to increase with the gestation 
So as it increases in gestation with the severity, the right ventricle dysfunctions exactly like what you'll get in a severe aortic stenosis where you have a ballooning of the left ventricle and uh, endomyocardial fibroelastosis. So this is, could be a possibility. And next possibility is ductal restriction, which also happens suddenly and RV can be dilated because of an obstruction ahead there is no flow across the pulmonary valve and that leads to reduced RV inflow also. So let me let me show you that in subsequent slides. Okay, now this is what we knew, but you know, then you get a TR velocity. Now TR velocity is about 5 meters per second, very high TR velocity for this gestational age, 30 plus gestational age. You know, if you have a severe TR and the TR velocity is high, it, it indirectly indicates that the RV systolic pressures are high. That means RV systolic pressures are high, it rules out the cardiomyopathy of the right ventricle. So TR was not because of cardiomyopathy, it was not because of the primary tricuspid valve abnormality, the RV is generating large systolic pressures which indicate that we have a obstruction ahead of the right ventricle. Notice something very interesting, you notice there is a prominent coronary artery, why do I say a coronary artery and not uh, the blood flow or a color doppler of a pericardial fluid. The Nyquist limit is high. So pericardial fluid would produce Nyquist low flow in the low Nyquist limit. And this is the pericardial flu fluid you can see. And this is in the myocardium. So if this is in the myocardium, it has to be coronary. The third point to differentiate is that this is only single phase. It's only on one direction. You only see the red color. You don't see the blue color. So the pericardial fluid Doppler is bidirectional. So this was a prominent coronary artery. And why does pulmonary coronary arteries develop? The coronary artery become prominent because of, you know, one reason, fetal hypoxia. And there is a sparing of the blood of cerebral circulation coronary circulation and adrenal circulation where the flow is increased and you already know in fetal hypoxia the cerebral flow increases. So same way the flow in the heart increases and coronary arteries become prominent. Second is that if you have an increased right ventricular pressure, the coronary can become prominent. You have a tricuspid and mitral atresia, there could be a collateral of the coronary arteries or there could be a coronary AV fistula or there could be anomalous origin of the left pulmonary artery from coronary artery from pulmonary artery is called L kappa. So let's uh, review this for the three the vessel view. First the RVOT view and you see on the RVOT view you see there is a reduced flow. There is no pulmonary stenosis right. So there is just a reduced flow into the pulmonary artery like we had a reduced flow into the right ventricle. So reduced flow across the pulmonary artery is almost diagnostic of uh, ductal restriction, right? So dilated pulmonary artery with reduced flow, diagnostic of ductal restriction. And you, we could see some of, you know, something in the, in the, around the pulmonary artery and we were not sure what it was. But this is uh, suggestive of some pulmonary uh, a, a fistula or pulmonary coronary fistula or something like that. We are not sure. We will see what uh, we get on the postnatal uh, uh, echocardiogram. So to summarize, in this patient, we had a diagnosis of severe ductal restriction. We could not demonstrate the flow across the ductus which indicated that possibly there was an uh, occlusion of the ductus because of the severe constriction. We have called this patient a couple of days from today to see because this patient was 35 years gestation and mother was taking uh, uh, NACIDs for uh, intermittently for more than two weeks period. We have asked her to stop those NACIDs 
and we'll review the echo and we'll post what we see there and we'll post the neonatal echo as and when uh, we, we see it. A uh, good idea again to subscribe because I would post uh, something new and you would be notified. Thank you very much for watching and being here.